Today I'm talking with Bart Sheridan with Sheridans, and uh, we're uh, discussing the real estate market. So, Bart, where is this going to end? We keep seeing uh, land prices and, and, and property values going up higher and higher. Is there any end in sight? Matt, there is an end, but I don't see it in my sight anyway. Uh, it's hard to fathom uh, where it might end, but we've been saying this. I, yeah, I tell people, uh, back 25 years ago, $3,000 was where people were trying to hit. If I got $3,000 land, I've got it made. And then it was four, and then it was seven, and now, you know, $10,000 and, and up. We're, you know, we just sold a farm near $13,000 here not too long ago. And that's, you know, that's why the auction method is such a good tool to have at, at our disposal because, you know, we, we sell properties, both the private listing method and the auction method, but in a in a seller's market like this, it's hard to set a, a list price. Well, it's really hard to set it and feel good about it. Well, and to me, it seems like maybe people out there have different pencils than I do. But how do you get some of this farm ground to pencil out as we start seeing these <laughs> values going up ten, fifteen thousand on up dollars per acre? It's called it's called legacy, and that's really what it comes down to. That's a big driver we see, and that is the uh, older farming families who want to continue to farm, and, and it's not. this is not all of it, but it's a lot of it, uh, they are saying, you know what, we've got land that is paid for because uh, I'm, you know, a fellow might say I'm $75,000 and I inherited a couple, three, 400 acres from my parents, and then over the years we finance land at uh, $1,500 an acre or $2,500 or $5,000 an acre. And so you've got all this land under ownership and your, your leverage potential is a lot higher. So you can go higher. Uh, I think a lot of people too, these folks who have been around for 50 years or so and who have children or grandchildren wanting to stay in the business, uh, they've got to get bigger and they realize that they can't do anything without the dirt. And so they're willing to put those prices on. And over time, they're, they're making it work. And uh, but it's not it's not because of the crops that year. It's because of the uh, the leverage potential that they have. That that's a lot of it. Well, and another discussion. I mean, we've been seeing strong land prices for a while now, and uh, even when uh, corn and soybean prices and commodity prices in general were pretty low. Uh, there for a pretty long stretch, we still saw solid uh, solid land values. And now that uh, those commodity prices have gone up, I, uh, I'm i expecting uh, we'll just continue to see it go up, up, up. What do you think? Well, it, I, I, I agree with you. And it's just it's going to fuel it even more. Uh, you know, I, I know a number of landowners who, when they, uh, when they collected their rent, their annual rent per acre, they got a little boost. And the uh, you know, the farmers are certainly uh, wise people and they're business people. And they know that, hey, if I can give my landlord a little boost, the landlord may or may not, you know, hopefully won't raise the uh, the price of the rent higher than what I want to pay. And so a lot of them are doing that. That's an indication that things have been good the past year or so. And, uh, yeah, that's going to fuel it even more. But, yeah, we haven't even talked about uh, 1031 tax deferred exchanges. Uh, that is uh, continuing to happen. Uh, we took a, I think we took a little bit of a, a, a slowdown in that over the past 10 years after 2008. It, uh, but now we're seeing more 1031 money come in. And uh, it's uh, those factors, really all three of those factors, the legacy farmers, the uh, good years, and then 1031s are, you know, kind of conspiring together to shoot these land prices sky high. Now, are uh, changing interest rates going to have an impact on this? <laughs> uh, ask me in a year, I'll let you know. <laughs> it, it's, it's hard to say. We, you know, 25 basis points per shot. Uh, those who are in the residential side of things, and that's really, I think, largely what this is intended to do, to hit the residential side of things, uh, and maybe even the commercial. But the, the land, uh, yeah, it's going to have an effect. I just, it's hard to say what the effect is. Of course, it's going to be a, a, uh, an effect that comes sometime later, and uh, it, it, it always lags after the raise in interest prices. But, you know, I think the those... 25 basis point jumps, uh, and you know, we're expecting to have as many as four this year. If the Fed's uh, uh, talking points are correct, but we I think that the first one 
may be an impetus to go out and buy more before it raises high. So I'm, I'm wondering if that won't, that first one that we had back in March might not propel some people, maybe even the next one coming might even propel some people to get out there and do it before it really hits. But uh, is 1% over the course of a year, that's my question, is 1% going to do much at all on, you know, when you're talking about this kind of money? And uh, I wish I knew. <laughs> I do. I do, too. We'd both be uh, probably doing different jobs if we knew the answer. To I am sure we would. <laughs> Now, uh, the, another question I've had is uh, we have seen these good, strong prices, and maybe those folks who were uh, in a position to sell some ground and, you know, on the fence about it but saw all these good returns uh, and sold their ground, uh, are those people running out? Are we going to see a slowdown in, in, in selling simply because all the people who were planning on selling have at this point sold? I wonder if they've, if they've even gotten to that point, Matt. I, you know, we have seen a slowdown. Who's the eternal optimist? The farmer is the eternal optimist, right? And uh, they, it's always going to get better. It's always going to get better. We have seen since things were getting better, and it's where I, I might even challenge the question, seeing people say, well, maybe if I stay in, it'll get a little more, a little higher. Um, you know, the number of transactions, at least in our area of southwest Ohio, has slowed that slowed down. Um, we are seeing a number of transactions slowing down. Of course, that that in itself, the uh, lack of supply of a new land is or new land for sale is driving helping drive prices up. But uh, I think there's still land out there that is to be sold. If you you know if you just do a search on any individual county in Ohio and look at absentee landlords. Uh, people who are maybe it's in a trust or or somewhere else. Those are the people who I think you know they're certainly looking maybe to uh, uh, transact, uh, make some transactions here soon. But um, I would suggest that now is the time to do that. I, I've told people for a long time it could get a little higher, it could get a lot lower. Yes. Uh, so, uh, what about uh, people uh, looking to buy land? What advice would you have for them as uh, as we see this market change here? Well, I, it's really the same as as any time in the past, and that is uh, knock on doors. Uh, make sure you're aligning yourself and uh, with a a good land expert, somebody who who understands the market and somebody who knows the area, knows the people who are, who might come into the market. Uh, you know, anymore we're seeing a lot of people knocking on doors. I get we're getting calls. Hey, we're looking for this much land, 100 acres, 500 acres, or whatever it might be. But uh, I think just getting out there and beating the bushes uh, when you have a low supply uh, of anything, you gotta go find it. And uh, you know, let's face it, the number of people who have called me and said, "Hey, I'm thinking about selling," and then they call back. Uh, you know, maybe two months later or a month later, say, so, yeah, my uh, my tenant farmer or my next door neighbor, he uh, he heard about it. He decided to go ahead and buy it at my price. Now we're, you know, like I said, the number of sales that we're seeing in our area is not strong. The number of sales, but the sales themselves are. And so you just got to go out and find it and be, you know, get down in the weeds with it and say, yeah, figure out where it is. Uh, what else do you want folks to know out there about the uh, real estate market right now in Ohio? Well, I'd say this, the real estate market on the ag side is, it is strong. It is a great place to put your money. I think we need to, we need to be careful on the, as I said, on the selling side or on the buying side, rather, you asked about that. We do need to be careful. Um, Legacy farmers can do that. If you're just getting in the market or or looking for a place to put your money, maybe pulling some money uh, out of uh, financial products and putting it into a tangible asset such as land. Um, Yeah, I think it's a good, it could be a good time to buy, but uh, if you're not wanting to do something right away, it could also be a good time just to sort of see what happens. I I hate to give that advice, but it's, uh, I'm telling my buyers, I'm saying, look, something's got to give some time. Now, if you want to wait out, wait out and see, uh, you know, there is a risk, but, uh, Boy, at thirteen, it's just thirteen thousand. It's just hard to hard to see it going up a tremendous amount more right now. On the selling side, like I said, I think it's a great time to sell. The uh, uh, even with these interest rate hikes, I think that what we're seeing is a uh, still a fury to get it. 
uh, and or a flurry to get it, I should say. And if you're thinking about selling now, it could be an excellent time to do so. And I, I don't say that uh, out of any uh, personal, you know, desire to get, uh, you know, get listings. Uh, certainly, that's what we're in the business to do. But this is what I'd, I'd be telling my family members: Look, it's a great time to get out while it's up as high as it is. Uh, well, excellent information. I've been talking with Bart Sheridan. And uh, for more about Sheridan's, you can check them out at SheridanTeam.com. I appreciate your time today, Bart. Matt, it's good to talk with you. always appreciate the uh, daily digital deals and also talking to you here today.